Side 2 I cannot possibly describe to you what it felt like to be standing alone in the pitchy blackness. The sense of loneliness was overwhelming. I tried to keep absolutely still for as long as possible to see if I could hear anything at all. I had a queer feeling that the whole wood was listening with me. The trees and the bushes, the little animals hiding in the undergrowth, and the birds roosting in the branches. All were listening. I switched on the torch. A brilliant beam of light reached out ahead of me like a long white arm. Now, at any rate, I could see where I was going. The keepers would also see, but I didn't care about the keepers any more. The only person I cared about was my father. I wanted him back. I kept the torch on and went deeper into the wood. Dad! Dad! It's Danny! Are you there? I didn't know which direction I was going in. I just went on walking and calling out, walking and calling. And each time I called, I would stop and listen. But no answer came. After a time, my voice began to go all trembly. I started to say silly things like, Oh, Dad, please tell me where you are. Please answer me. Are you there, Dad? It's Danny. I stood still, listening, listening, listening. And in the silence that followed, I heard, or thought I heard, the faint but Oh, so faint, sound of a human voice. I froze and kept listening. Yes, there it was again. I ran towards the sound. Dad! I shouted. It's Danny! Where are you? I stopped again. This time the answer came just loud enough for me to hear the words. I'm here! The voice called out. Over here! It was him. Where are you, Danny? My father called out. I'm here, Dad, I'm coming. With the beam of the torch shining ahead of me, I ran towards the voice. And all at once his voice was right in front of me. Stop, Danny, stop, he shouted. I stopped dead. I shone the torch over the ground. I couldn't see him. Where are you, Dad? I'm down here. Come forward slowly, but be careful. Don't fall in. I crept forward. Then I saw the pit. I went to the edge of it and shone the light downward. And there was my father. He was sitting on the floor of the pit, and he looked up into the light and said, Hello, my marvellous darling. Thank you for coming. Are you all right, Dad? My ankle seems to be broken. It happened when I fell in. The pit had been dug in the shape of a square, with each side about six feet long. But it was the depth of it that was so awful. It was at least twelve feet deep. Does it hurt? Yes, it hurts a lot. But I've got to get out of here before morning. The keepers know I'm here, and they're coming back for me as soon as it gets light. Did they dig the hole to catch people? Yes. I shone my light around the top of the pit, and saw how the keepers had covered it over with sticks and leaves, and how the whole thing had collapsed when my father stepped on it. It was the kind of trap hunters in Africa dig to catch wild animals. Do the keepers know who you are? No. Two of them came and shone a light down on me, but I covered my face with my arms and they couldn't recognize me. I heard them trying to guess. They were guessing all sorts of names, but they didn't mention mine. Then one of them shouted, We'll find out who you are all right in the morning, my lad, and guess who's coming with us to fish you out? Mr. Victor Hazel himself. Ouch, my poor ankle. Have the keepers gone, Dad? Yes, they've gone for the night. I was kneeling on the edge of the pit. I wanted so badly to go down and comfort him, but that would have been madness. What time is it? Showing the light down so I can see. I did as he asked. It's ten to three. I must be out of here before sunrise. Dad? Yes? I came in the baby Austin. You what? I wanted to get here quickly, so I just drove it out of the workshop and came straight here. You're crazy. It wasn't difficult. You could have been killed. I went fine, Dad. Where is it now? Just outside the wood on the bumpy track. His face was all puckered up with pain and as white as a sheet of paper. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. He was shivering all over 
though it was a warm night. If only we could get you out. I'll never get out of here without a ladder. Wouldn't a rope do? A rope? Yes, of course. There's one in the baby Austin. It's under the back seat. Mr. Pratchett always carries a tow rope in case of a breakdown. I'll get it, I said. Wait there, Dad.